and welcome back to Saber Outdoors. My name, of course, is Mark Alexander, your wonderful host, and today I am going to use this three-quarter inch piece of dowel rod from Walls Mart. Go to the craft section, guys. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to see if I can make myself a functioning wooden lure. Now, guys, of course, I don't need this whole thing, but... I want to keep it on this for the time being and I'll show you why. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to decide what kind of lure I'm going to make. Guys, what kind of lure would you make? Put down in the com comment section. I think today I am going to make a walking bait. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, let me actually put you da down where my hands are so you can see what I'm up to. Don't, don't run off, off guys, this will not take long. Boom and boom. Cool. So what I'm going to do, let me put you all a little lower. I'm going to take my piece of wood and I'm just going to do like this. Now what that's doing, you can see, that's giving me a nice consistent bevel on this. Now I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it down to where I want it to be. And guys, it's gonna take a little while. So I'm gonna go ahead, ahead and turn you all off and I'll show you when I'm done doing the thing. All right guys, I twisted and turned on it for a good long while and you can see I barely made any real progress. So we're gonna be carving this dude. We're just gonna, oh, that carves really nicely. But guys, we're just going to work our way around. Oops, I just hit hit my tripod. Hopefully my knife's not ruined. We're going to work our way around, around this thing. And then we will do the finish shaping with the, uh, with the file like I was intending. But guys, again, I'm not going to waste your time just watching me go back and forth in like, you know, super speed. So uh, I'm going to shape this and bring you all back momentarily. All right, guys, so I've got it down kind of a small thing. I'm taking real fine, small amounts of wood off now in order to basically smooth it as much as I can before I end up needing to go to my file. But when I get my file going, and you can see I've got relatively smooth and uniform piece of wood wood considering that i'm doing this by hand but i'm gonna go back to the same thing i was doing i'm gonna get that angle in there and i'm gonna twist it because i don't have any you know i don't have any sanders i don't have any kind of uh way to get this nice and smooth so this is the only way that i've got but i'm just gonna sit here and smooth that end off and then i'm gonna decide how long i want this and cut her off all right, so we have our piece of wood here, and uh, I've decided I've got it marked right there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but what I'm gonna do with that mark is I'm gonna get my trusty handy-dandy pocket knife. And I'm gonna take my pocket knife, and uh, I'm just gonna make a little indention right there. Now, why? Why am I doing this? So, I'm doing this so that when I cut this, that instead of when I get to the very end, it's going to want to tear out, I'm hopeful that instead it will take and not do that. And this is how I would cut a lot of different things. You know, if I wanted to cut a tree in two, or if I wanted a specific thing for primitive traps or whatever this is a sort of bush crafting technique that i would use but see i've got me a nice mark plumb around and i'm going to take i'm not using you know i could use a coping saw a hacksaw i'm just going to use a regular folding saw and i'm going to make sure you all can see yeah you all can see that so i'm just going to take that and i'm going to set it right right there and I'm gonna real gentle like let the saw do the work because if I get rough with this 
it's not going to look nice. And I want it to look reasonably nice for this particular project. It's getting getting kind of down to the end of it and it's wanting to pinch my saw. But I'm just going to continue to work it through. And there we are. And we got just a little bit of tear out there. But our next lure, if we make another one, I can probably get rid of that. But uh, right there is our lure. And uh, I'm going to get back up in my seat. And I'm going to trim down the nose. And then we'll work on sealing this up. And I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute. All right, guys. So we have our uh, piece in front of us. We're going to get our knife back out. Now, I don't need this much angle on the nose. I need it to be relatively short. So I'm going to start around about that far up. I might move it back a little bit more. And I'm just going to start taking off material. And guys, there's a split right here. But it's gone now. That's why we cut that little, I don't know what to call it, chamfered edge? I don't know. But we're just going to sit here and we're going to work our piece down. And then when we get it down far enough, see now we're starting to get down to a point really quickly. Like guys, I've not been at this, you've seen every bit of it that I've done. But we're going to take and start taking real small swipes at it now. To knock off the big things and you can use both your thumbs to give yourself a more powerful push when you're doing this kind of thing all right guys we've started our thing it's a little bit crooked But we've got our point started. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my file back up. And I'm going to refine this a little bit. So that I can have something a little bit nicer to look at. Let me just put that in my front pocket. My file is just right behind you all. I don't need to go for it very far. But I'm just going to... Do just like I was. Only, I'm keeping that really steep angle now. And I can definitely tell this steeper angle is not to this thing's liking. <sighs> so that's good enough to suit me. So, guys... We're going to uh, seal this wood, and give me a moment, and I'll show you how we're going to do it. All right, guys, so to seal this wood, we're going to use just plain old Loctite super glue. Now, guys, this is advertised that it's good for wood, metal, any, any kind of material I would be using during this process. So I'm going to seal this wood, and then I'll be ready to start my work painting. I'm going to just coat this with super glue. And we're just going to use our finger to get that all over the place. Yes, it's burning. I will survive. Almost glued my finger to the packaging, actually. There, that's one end. Oof. I'm starting to stick, stick to me. <laughs> smells too. I'm glad I'm doing this outside. We're going to give that just a little longer to dry and then we're going to do the tail end. <sighs> Definitely use this stuff in a well ventilated area. And be careful because I've almost glued my finger to this thing. Alright, cool. Dry enough. Alright guys, our fingers are sticky, 
but we do have something 100% covered in super glue, so it's sealed. We don't have to worry about the water getting into it. Guys, time for paint. Well, guys, my fingers are hard as rocks, so uh, I imagine that means that uh, my piece of wood is good enough to go. Now, I had grand plans of putting this inside of a box, and I would be like, shoo, 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 and just really making it look fancy. Guys, I decided that was a little bit too much. I'm just going to take and I'm going to fog it in my, uh, my parking area. You know, what little might drip on the ground ground the ground's wet as can be i don't think it'd ever stick but uh i've got me a pair i did install the uh, front eyelet and i did i'm using a pair of uh of hemostats in order to keep myself away from uh from the painting of this but we're just gonna we're just gonna keep spraying it until it's all white we sprayed a little bit too mu much, and I've got a couple of runs. But, uh, guys, this is going to stay wet long enough for me to take care of those runs. So, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab me a piece of paper towel, and I'm going to dab, dab, dab. And that'll probably be, be fine enough. But, uh, guys, we're going to let this dry. Might hit it for one more coat, because this paint is old and didn't coat this as well as I'd like. But might hit it for one more coat, but the next thing you'll see, we're going to pick a way to paint this. Guys, put down in the comments, how would you paint one of these kind of baits? All right, guys, so uh, our base primer is, is finally dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually start mixing up my colors. Now, guys, what would you paint this? I may have already asked you, but I'm asking you again. What colors would you paint a walking bait? I think I'm gonna make this walking bait a baby bass. So uh, let me go to mixing some colors up because I didn't buy colors. I just bought primaries, white, black. That way uh, I can really modify and uh, make it a real custom setup for me. But like I've got my real high dollar setup here. I've got a paper plate. I know it's almost most like I spent money on this. I've got brand new, just straight from Walmart paint paint things. And let me get the plastic off these off camera because I don't want to waste your time. All right, guys. So we got got our uh, got our plastics off. So we're just gonna start blurting some paint out. Might have to uh, get it down to where my spout is. Okay. That's probably more than I need, but I'd rather have more than I need than not enough. And let me tap on this one too. Get the paint down there. But let's just a little bit more blue than than uh, yellow, and let's see what kind of green that will make up. Is this going to be like a happy trees green, or is this going to be bass green like I want? All right, my green is a little bit not quite what I want. I want it a little bit lighter than this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put me a little bit of white in it. Got to find all the little pockets of paint and get it all mixed up. Guys, I'm going to call that good. So we're going to get get our uh, lure here and uh, we're gonna paint first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna mark down the side kind of where my paint so that's kind of where I want my paint to end and let's do the same on the other side okay so I've got down both sides Kind of where I want it to end, you know, stop being green, that is. But uh, we're going to just bulk paint that. And we might, we might do something with the tail of this. Give it something to really make it uh, really noticeable. Oh, no. This side's a little bit messed up. That's okay, though. 
It's just pure opportunity. There. Now, looking at it from either side, you know, you can see it's not bad. It's pretty even. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to let this dry. So what I'm doing, I'm wiping my paint down, of course, and making sure I have not very many streaks. There are going to be a few of them no matter what. But, uh, guys, we're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to uh, probably add another coat of green. I'll do that off screen. But uh, after we get that second coat of green on, we'll start working on, on our sides, and we might even add a little gill flap there. I don't know. I, this is the first time I'm doing this kind of thing like this. So, uh, guys, in the meantime, we're going to set this to dry. All right, guys, so our baits had a little time to dry. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to work on putting a black back on this thing. I don't need a ton of black. But uh, I'm going to put a black back on this, of course, like I just said. And I'm going to also work on those side things. But uh, I'm going to make sure this is relatively straight. And I, this isn't completely dry, which is kind of part of the plan. Because I'm hoping that maybe I can blend it a little bit so it's not such a harsh... See, I've got a little bit of paint to work with. It doesn't look amazing, but uh, I'm going to give myself permission to not have something go perfectly my way. That's something you, you need to do for yourself, guys. Give yourself permission to be bad at something. You think you're going to be perfect at everything the first time you do it. First of all, I want to live in that delusional world you also are in, but also, too, You're never going to progress anywhere if that is your stance on everything. Life's not like a video game. You can't put it on easy mode. You have to uh, work at things, do things. And speaking of those things, I'm going to put this back to uh, let it dry plumb off. And then I'm going to put solid black on there because you can see my green is a little bit darker but it's not like black black i'm gonna put really black on the very back all right guys so our piece is not not quite dry but i'm i'm impatient i want to get get this done so we're gonna put us a little red and we might put us the most tiniest like a drop of white like as little white as possible good deal so, we'll just take that white and just wipe it between our fingers so that it doesn't get anywhere. We did wash our things. So, we're going to make a really nice bright red to pink. That'll be fine for our purposes. And guys, we're going to give this a red throat. Because that's a classic thing to do for this kind of bait. So we're just going to... Real easy like... Paint this with a red throat. Okay. 
And you know what? For kicks and giggles, we'll put a little red tail on her too. All right, cool. So uh, that's got that done. Let me uh, let me do one more thing. And it may be too wet to do it. It is too wet to do it. Guys, we're going to have to give this time to fully dry. We may even have to postpone this to tomorrow. So, guys, we're going to let this 100% dry. And then I've got two minor... I'm going to put two white dots for eyes. And uh, then we're going to put some clear coat on it and see what we can do with it. All right, guys. So... Darkness is fell outside, but you know what? I don't need, need the out of doors to do this. I can paint inside just as well. So what I'm gonna do, this is more or less painted. The only thing I'm going to do, if I can figure out what I've done with it, I'm gonna take a little white and I'm gonna make me two white dots for some eyes. Cause guys, I don't have eyes, but uh, I'm going to put those eyes on there and uh, then I'm going to go outside and I'm going to fog this thing with a uh, clear coat so that you all, all will be able to enjoy this wonderfulness for a long time coming. But I'm going to paint those white dots off screen and I'm going to fog this thing off screen, but I will show you what it looks like after I finish with the clear coat. Don't run off. <sighs> All right, guys, so we have been waiting a long while. Guys, I wanted to show you I'm so proud of my eyes. So I, what I did, I took the smaller of my two brushes, took the white, white, made my dot, and then I cleaned my brush out, of course. I waited for my white to dry, and then I took and stuck this end into the black paint and that's how I made my dot there. Guys, it's not pretty, but it's okay. It's gonna be awesome. So guys, this is what it looks like before we get to the thing. See, my eyes aren't perfectly symmetrical, but guys, it's good enough for me. But uh, this is what it looks like beforehand. I'm gonna go outside, and all I'm using is a little bit of uh, can, you know, spray can clear. Guys, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to make this last until the next century. I just need this to last long enough to prove that I made something functional. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna step outside, I'm gonna fog this, and then come back inside and show it to you. I'm gonna probably dry it at least once and fog it again in the morning, but uh, I wanna fog it once before so that I can show you all how awesome it looks. Be right back. <laughs> it actually looks really, really good, guys. I am quite happy with how pretty that looks. So guys, I'm gonna put this somewhere that I can be sure that it will not be bothered with until tomorrow. I'm gonna fog it again before I show it to you again. And then we're gonna put some hooks on this thing and we're gonna go give it a try. All right, guys, it's day two. Now I was able to fog it again last night, but you can see my eyes, they're looking good. My body's looking good. I've got hooks on this thing. Now, with the hooks that are on this thing, I thought I was gonna only use two but I ended up needing three, but I made sure that my hooks, they can't hook each other. They're too far away. That's one thing I made sure to check on before I really finalized them hooks. But guys, there's no weight inside of this, as you all saw as I was building. So I'm concerned that it may not run. Oh, it looks perfect. It wants to turn over a little bit. Let's give her one actual throw and give her a try. It'll walk a little, but not super well. Now, one thing they don't tell you 
on these bait making videos i didn't realize how heavy a wooden bait would be really picked up grass on a top water bait how strange but i didn't realize how heavy this would be this is probably at least a half ounce maybe even three quarters of an ounce without any weight in the bait at all okay i'm figuring it out guys i'm figuring it out i'm actually getting a real walk the dog style movement out of this thing <laughs> guys i cannot believe that we have taken on a front porch with not that much in the way of nice stuff and we've made us something functional guys that is crazy i cannot believe it you i know you can't see my face but i don't know if i'll get this dumb grin off my face all day from how awesome this is you got to work this thing slow though give it time to make it walk It's not perfect, it's not amazing, but guys, it was the cost of materials and it appears to be working just fine. Guys, <laughs> I can't believe how awesome this is. Like, I'm, the action's not, not super great, but I'm just glad it has any action at all. But uh, let me get to uh, the truck and we will talk about this thing and get this all wound up. <laughs> guys well it ain't the prettiest thing but it works it works guys if we were in uh, about two months ago weather this would be a dominating little outfit with that red throat throat red tail and we've got got not the best looking body but guys fish don't care fish don't care it doesn't have to look amazing for it to be perfect and i'm gonna be truthful here i thought about just white shad dot red red sea for a gill plate eyes but i thought that would be kind of a cop out guys i, I thought that would be too e easy to be like okay fog it dot done that that's a little too easy guys this was definitely even if it doesn't look so amazing it was definitely more complicated than my first thought but uh <laughs> i'm so excited that it works that it floats that it doesn't like turn over or around or do any kind of funny bits um <clears throat> yeah i'm just happy overall but uh but guys if you want to do this, you've seen everything that I used. You've seen every part of this that I did. You could be doing this. File, a knife. Let's see. You needed a pair of pliers for the eyes because I had to bend the eyes a little bit in order to get the hooks inside of them. And let me think here. Yeah, a knife, a file, painting supplies. That's it. You could be doing this, and this is a great project for young people. Guys, if you've got a kid that's like 10, 12, 14, even into their their young adult years, you know, e even as old as I am, I had a great time just sitting on porch whittling, getting my, my piece right, and uh, after I got it right, guys, we put hooks on, we painted it, put hooks on it, and two coats of clear gloss in order to get it to look like this and guys we have a functioning bait you could be doing this you could be doing this but in the meantime thanks for watching please like share subscribe comment hit the bell notification and subscribe because it's going to be be one of these days i might get paid to do this and at that point i'm going to be one happy boy and you all are going to be the reason for that. And I thank every one of you. But in the meantime, thanks again for watching. We'll see you somewhere in the woods or on the water.